Welcome to the local campaign on this edition. For the next hour, your chance to question the candidates from Scarborough Rouge River. Here is a quick view of the riding itself. It covers the northeast part of Scarborough from Highway 401 in the south to Steeles Avenue in the north. In the east, Scarborough Rouge River ends at the border of Pickering and in the east, just west of Midland Avenue. And now from the riding, let's meet the candidates and we will meet them as usual in alphabetical order. Marlene Galliot is here. She is the conservative candidate. Rana Sarkar, the Liberal candidate we had expected, is not here yet. We'll keep a seat open for her should she arrive. George Singh is here from the Green Party. And Rathika Sitsabaisan is the New Democratic Party candidate, and she's here as well. Thank you all very much for coming. Remember to everyone out there, if you have, oh, I should mention as well, Mark Ballack is an independent candidate running. There was no response to our invitation to attend this evening. You call 416-446-7090 if you have a question for uh, the candidates, or you can email questions to torontovotes at rogerstv.com. Our question, of course, what's your question for the candidates of Scarborough Rouge River? We have one rule for these kinds of programs. Please do not call if you volunteer or work for any candidate in this election campaign. Let's give mere mortal voters a chance to ask the questions. All right, customary at the beginning of the hour to ask each uh, candidate in a minute or less to tell us a bit about themselves. Marlene Gallio, please go ahead. Hello, my name is Marlene Gallio, and I'm a candidate for the Conservative Party of Canada. I'm a mother of four children ages 15 to 22. I was an immigration consultant, a small business owner, and I've traveled to over 22 countries and I understand diversity and multiculturalism. I intend to be active in immigration and the process of immigration in Scarborough Rouge and creating jobs that will be held locally in Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next candidate, George Singh. Good evening. My name is George Singh. I'm 37 years old. I was born in Toronto to parents of Guyanese and Bermudian heritage. I've been self-employed since I was 19 years old, and that path led me on to being a legal assistant currently. I go to the University of Toronto studying Canadian history, and my whole mission is to make sure that responsible government comes to Rouge River. This is my third election. I ran in 97 when I was 23 years old, and I ran in 2010 in the municipal elections. The most important issue is that people decide on an elected representative that is in their best interest. This isn't a party situation. This is a person situation for you. We are here to serve the constituents. All right, thank you very much. And the next candidate, Rathika Sitsabaisan. Go ahead, please. Good evening. I'm Rathika Sitsabaisan, and I'm running to be the next member of parliament for Scarborough Rouge River. I live in the community. I've worked extensively with the youth in our community. And because of the amount of activism and advocacy I'm already doing for the members and the people of Scarborough Rouge River, I've been asked to join and I'm the newest board member for the Malvern Community Coalition. I live, I work with the youth, I'm connected to the residents of the community, I understand the distinct issues of Scarborough Rouge River, and this is why I know that I am the strongest voice of change that the people of Scarborough Rouge River have for so long hoped for. Thank you for having me here with you tonight. Okay, well let's talk a bit about that. What are the issues of Scarborough Rouge River? George Singh, can you go into some detail yeah. from your point of view? From my point of view, the issues are jobs. Um, when I'm campaigning, when I'm talking to people, everything they say is we need more jobs. Aside from that, it's also education. Um, Scarborough Rouge River is a huge area. It's been developed so quickly that there hasn't been able enough infrastructure to keep up, such as daycare. I know somebody who's been waiting two years for daycare, and they say they're going to be on a waiting list for another year. This person can't even get a job or pursue an interest in school. So these are issues that everyday Rouge River citizens are facing. Economics, particularly jobs, I think that's what jobs you're Jobs is, is number one. Marlene Galliot, what, what are the issues of Scarborough Rouge River as far as you're concerned? Oh, I think there are two main issues when I go door knocking, and that would be immigration and creating jobs. As an immigration consultant, I intend to uh, focus on the issues that they keep asking me about how we can reunite families. The Family reunification, family reunification, is, reunification is, a is a big is, issue? Is a big issue. And uh, 
coming from India myself, I understand as an immigrant that that would be an issue for myself as mm -hmm. well. And uh, creating jobs is so important that I intend to bring in foreign investors so that we can invest locally and we can create the jobs locally because there isn't enough jobs locally. Okay. And with immigration and the unification, for 13 years we had the liberal government in power that put a 13-year backlog which now the conservative government is trying to, to, uh, to process applications that have been such a backlog. And I intend to focus on these issues because these are the two main issues that, and as an immigration consultant, I understand how to address these issues. Okay, thank you very much. Rathika, Sister Baisen, you brought it up, uh, the issues of Scarborough Rouge River. What are they? Let's hear it from your point of view. Uh, it's, it's interesting to hear that, uh, especially from the conservative candidate, that we don't have local jobs because um, this is a really strong issue that I am hearing at the doors as well. When I'm talking to the people at their doorsteps, first thing, first and foremost, they're saying everything is too expensive. Food prices are going up. Gas prices have skyrocketed, tripled within the last decade. Um, things like home heating is a necessity here in Canada, especially through our brutal winters. And people are tired of paying more and more and more, especially with the new payroll tax that was brought in in the middle of the recession. People are earning less, but paying more for everyday goods and everyday necessities. People are paying more, but not getting back as much. And then, of no. course, the jobs. What's happening is these the, all these amounts that we're paying extra, the Conservative government has taken that and <laughs> they're giving it as large multinational uh, corporate tax cuts to large corporations and not investing in jobs locally. What we're saying is let's invest in the jobs locally. Invest in the small business owners who are actually creating jobs locally in our and communities. And how do we do that? reward the small businesses and medium-sized businesses by giving them the tax credits, giving them a, we have an incentive-based tax credit also for new hires. If you hire somebody within the, if you create a job, hire somebody within your local community, well then you as a small business owner, we will give you a credit on your EI contributions you're making and your tax contributions you're making within that fiscal year. And if you keep somebody on for more than 12 months for a longer term contract or more sustainable full-time employment, then you continue to get breaks by ensuring that these jobs are staying mm -hmm. locally. Okay. There's a lot more issues that well, people are uh, bringing there are, up as but well. We do have a little more time, so we okay. don't have to get them all out in the all first right. answer, okay? George Singh, you're the Green Party candidate. Are you hearing environmental issues? At the door as well? I'm, I'm hearing them, but not as much as people would think. Um, yeah. what, what the impression is the Green Party is all about environmental issues, and that is a strong standpoint. But the Green Party is about responsible government. It's very focused on proportional representation. Right now, the Green Party had 7% of the vote in the last election, almost a million votes. And, that's, and that doesn't reflect in the seats. As 7% of the vote, you should have 7% of the seats of the House of Commons. And that will reflect a true democracy. We need to get back to true democracy. So then uh, you don't bring up environmental issues at the we door? We do bring up environmental issues. Um, I, I see your point. You're trying right. to, you know. We're trying to broaden it. That's the main reason why a lot of people. I know, but people, your name is the Green Party. That's it, why it I asked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the thing is, the environmental issues, right now we give $1.4 billion in subsidies to the oil companies. Once we remove that subsidy, that $1.4 billion will be back in our community to lower our taxes. The Green Party wants to set the tax rate at $20,000, whereby if you're making under $20,000, you're not charged income tax. Mm -hmm. If I may, our friend here mentioned that the Green Party is also about responsible governance. That's what you said? Responsible government, yes. Responsible government, sure. Um, but it is the NDP who have always owned and taken leadership on and spearheaded environmental initiatives, ensuring things like, and, and making things more affordable and helping working families as well, like the Eco Energy Retrofit Program. That was the NDP's project. We, we initiated, we spearheaded, we led. We have continued Are you to hearing lead. it at the door now? We are, are hearing it at the door. Saying, yeah, I'm hearing it at the door. What environmentally are you going to do for our for sure, because riding people, or our people country? People do want to yeah. move towards Everyone a greener is. environment and greener economy. And that, that's another initiative that we have is moving towards a green economy environment so that we're creating more green jobs in our communities as well. Okay. All the All other right. parties are jumping on the green initiatives. Um, Harper's bringing it up with the renewable energy. NDP's bringing it up right now. And the Conservatives... Well, well actually, is that a good actually, thing or a bad thing? No, it's, it's a good thing. But they're jumping, hang, hang on a second. They're jumping sure. on the bandwagon. Yeah. The Green Party is the only one who uh, makes it part of their platform and pushes it to the forefront. Whereby in the debates, they want to leave it out. The, the, the environment is our future. If we don't protect our future, we'll have nothing yeah. for our children. Okay, fair enough. Well, Marlene Gallio, you know? what about the... But yeah. let me go back to the original yeah. question, what, which was... 
Are you hearing that kind of thing at the door? People uh, asking you about environmental issues? People are not so concerned in Scarborough Rouge River, but I am concerned. I'd like to encourage more projects with, uh, for, to, for clean energy projects. And I also want to bring up what Radhika just brought up about, which is a conservative idea about helping small businesses. Mm -hmm. The conservative government are the ones that are giving a, a, an, ex, uh, an employment insurance tax credit for small business owners to create more jobs locally. And we have started the economic action plan with a stimulus package that went to uh, all the provinces and the territories as well as municipal government that have uh, built infrastructural projects and created more jobs in this terrible economy. It was uh, the coalition that wants to create a problem. We didn't need an election. The liberal, Mr. Ignatieff, has created Here this. Okay. And so we do not I wondered how long it would take before yeah. we would get no, into that. Rathka, yes, would you like to respond to that? Of course. This? First, I have to talk about the economic action plan and the creation of jobs. What it's actually created is more precarious work not good jobs. What we need to say is we need to create well, more good jobs. When I say precarious... They were temporary, were they not? Exactly. I mean, creating not. temporary I, I and part-time uh, work I'm, I worked in the municipal government for the last five years and I think the municipal governments have, have benefited a lot with this economic action plan. We've created sure, infrastructure there have been, projects. There have been part-time and temporary local, jobs no, that have been created, have created through this economic local, action plan. Because in this, you know what, in this issue... One in at a time. Issue, I'm going to let you no, finish. No, no, I, I gave, in, Marlene, I gave you some time. I'm giving time to Rathka. Um, and, and, and so the question uh, really, um, if you would like to address the uh, original question, or maybe we should go on from there. We talked about uh, green initiatives. You're talking about jobs. You're talking now about the national issues, the coalition. What brought up what Reckless came up was the election. Whatever. You want and to bring also why yeah, the election yeah, 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 happened. Yeah. Those are two things that came up with the economic yes, action exactly. plan, creating jobs, creating more part-time and contract work. When I'm talking to people at the door, when I'm talking to my constituents, my neighbors at the door, they're tired of working two or three part-time jobs to make ends meet. I met a family who works shifts, basically, a mother and a father, and they have one child. One mm -hmm. father works overnight, the mother works during the daytime just so that they can take care of their child. This is not a strong economy. This is not creating jobs that we can create good families, good family values, good family life out of. How, how is the quality of life improving for families when, we, when the two parents are not able to spend time with each other as well as the children at the same time? The other thing that came up was that this election didn't need to happen. We're all saying the same thing, but the reason that the election happened right now is because Stephen Harper and the Conservatives, this government is broken. They're not listening to the people. The people are saying that we want more affordability of things. We want more jobs. And Jack Layton and the NDP are the only ones who are trying to work towards fixing that. When the budget was presented, we're the only ones who said, let's give importance to our seniors. Let's make sure that our seniors are not retiring into poverty. There's 150,000 of our seniors right, who are retiring into poverty. But, uh, unless okay. we have we, a strong economy, economy you know, let's hear from Marlon Gallagher. Unless Go we ahead. have a strong economy, we can't do anything. Uh, the economy is the number one factor. We are coming out of a global recession, and this is important for us to focus so first on the economy. So and why I, I it was a global recession? Parties. It's a global recession, and I think we've done very well. In the great seven nations, I think Canada has done the best, and it was under Stephen. You have to understand why it's Stephen Harper's Let's hear from George Singh on this. You're saying we've done well, but Stephen Harper got this government in a surplus, and now he's drove it into a deficit. No, we brought it down from the liberals that have created it in the first place. Stephen Harper is Well, that's not quite true, is it? George makes a good point here, is that when the Conservatives came into government, they had a surplus, and now we have the largest deficit in Canadian history. Well, but some of that is the recession. I mean, you can't Why, necessarily... Sure, the uh, global you know, economic downturn. And also, so I have, to, I have that, to touch on uh, Marlene's point about Canada coming out ahead of the other countries. But why, though? Why is Canada ahead? It's because of the way that our financial system is set up. Our financial industry is not set up like the monopolistic system that is in the United States. Our wealth is spread out more, and that's why we have a more stable financial system that we've been able to recover okay. better from. All right. Let me go on and ask, uh, get some questions from the telephone on the line.